Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Happy Saturday. Unfortunately, things got really busy this month. And so we did not get a chance to get in our June tea leaf reading with our favorite tea leaf reader, Sarah Adamson. Um, but she is here today. What we thought we would do today is we would just do a brief catch up with Sarah so you guys could get a chance to get her, get to know her better as a human being, as a Canadian patriot. And then we would soon, in the next couple of weeks, do the July reading, get back to our July tea leaf reading. But in the meantime, after this episode airs, I am going to be doing a giveaway. I am going to be drawing one lucky person to have a 30-minute tea leaf reading privately with Sarah on Esoteric Atlanta. The channel will be paying for it for you. So if you are interested, if you would like to be put into the drawing for a free tea leaf reading with Sarah on Esoteric Atlanta. Just put your name down in the comment section below with Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, by your name, and I will enter your name into the drawing, and we will announce the winner on our July tea leaf reading episode coming up in the next couple of weeks. But before we get into our conversation with Sarah, here is a brief word from our sponsors. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I'm 
feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my Uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement, but 
from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and Jay or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I'm joined here with the beautiful, gorgeous Sarah, our many Canadian patriots. I, I hate that we even have to divide countries at this point because I just feel like we're one. No, you know, we're the even though the globalists want us in one one global thing, I feel like we're their worst nightmare. We're like. <laughs> We're, we are dispersed among we're dispersed and we support each other, but in a good way. So, in a good way. In a good way. Um, and Sarah and I, of course, have been chit chatting and catching up. And I did put an introduction to this video. Um, we it's been a crazy, crazy like two months here, guys. And I know Sarah and her mother, you white guys, have been under the weather, so we did not get to do a June tea leaf reading. Um for this month, for the month of June 2023. But surprise, surprise, on Monday, this upcoming Monday, which is the 19th, um, Sarah's going to have, she just showed me the cup. I'm not a tea leaf reader, but that cup looks pretty bodacious. So <laughs> I didn't see any smooching, but there were a few hearts. So <laughs> No smooching, but a few hearts. Okay, well, building up to we'll some take the We'll take the heart. We'll take the heart. Exactly. So, so I'll, on Monday, guys, and actually, Sarah, when you release the video on Monday, let me know and I'll put it on my community tab so that people can catch up with what's going on and get a feel for um, for what's going on. And then, of course, we'll have you back at the end of June to do a July reading. And I, I announced this in the beginning, but I'm going to announce it again, you guys. So I said one. We're going to give away one reading with Sarah, but I just changed my mind. I can do that. We're going to give two readings away. So I would like for you, again, if you want a tea, it's a 30 for a 30 minute tea leaf reading with Sarah. If you would like to be entered into the drawing uh, to have a uh, session, a 30 minute session with Sarah for two people, put your name down in the comment section, section below mm -hmm. and write Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, Sarah with an H, and, um, and put Sarah in the comment section so I can see all your names so that by the time she comes back, we'll be able to look and uh, pull two winners for a free, for a free reading with Sarah. Oh, so exciting. So exciting. So Sarah, what's been going on with you? Uh, just really getting over this cold that I've had for almost six weeks now on Saturday, essentially. So if I sound a little bit stuffy or a little bit foggy throat, my apologies. That's I'm drinking my, okay, I don't drink tea. We know that, but I do like rooibos tea. So I am happily drinking my rooibos tea. So I am doing that. But essentially just getting better and catching up with all of my videos that I've finally gotten caught up with. So I had to do two. So I got the two done and just posted a short and just getting myself finally caught up there. And I've recorded the new TV reading. So that is, yeah, it looks quite crazy. It's going to yeah. be whatever is coming up for the next two weeks. I have to like re like listen to the recording that I did to like remember all the details, but essentially a lot of love, a lot of partnerships, a lot of craziness, but a lot of good stuff, like a lot of abundance. There had to have been like, I don't know, seven trees or something. So for wow. me, trees are abundance. That's just what it means to me. Because readings are like, that's how I do it. So for me, abundance is trees and TV reading. So it's, there were multiple and there were partnerships. And it was interesting too, because like, the tree would lead to another tree that would lead to another tree that would lead to a partnership that would lead to. It was quite, 
interesting. It's like stepping and stones. Amazing. It's stepping stones, yes, 100%. And that's exactly what I said without using those words, because as I was looking at it, I'm like, whatever this is, it's we may find ourselves, and it's a general reading, so entertainment purposes only, take what you will and leave what you don't, but it really looks to me like one leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next, and it's like a consistent thing during the next two approximately weeks. And interestingly, that does go into, is looking at the calendar, goes into the, I don't have the dates, pardon me, goes into the first week of July, which, oh gosh, hang on one second. I just want to check my calendar. I'm using one phone and using my other phone here. Um, it goes into like the next weekend. So the week of July 1st, heading into like J July 3rd. So July 1st is Canada Day and July 4th is Independence Day. So whatever it's leading up to, it's two significant dates in North America anyway. So, so I just found is, that to be very this interesting. This is big astrologically too, because we know, mm -hmm. you know, if the American Revolution actually happened, which if you're new to this channel and you're like, why is she saying that? LOL. <laughs> There's a lot we don't know anymore. We're not so sure about a whole lot of stuff now. Oh no. We don't know. We're like, <laughs> maybe it's it. Maybe it was a cover up. We don't know these things. No, we don't know anymore. We don't know what our history is anymore. But if we're gonna if we're gonna do the mainstream knowledge, uh, they you know J July fourth is like our Independence Day, but we didn't actually. It was like the third or the second or something that we actually won. They picked the fourth, my friends. Get this. They picked the fourth because that is the day. It has something to do with the sun and the Earth pulling away from the sun, where it's the most and independent from the power of the sun. Which, if you look at that from a dark cult perspective, the sun huh. has always been the representation of light and of goodness, right? Mm -hmm. Probably, it's probably a portal. We don't, we don't quite know yet, but as we know, nothing's as probably, um, probably at this point. They, yeah, they mark this day of celebration for the United States as a day, basically, and and you know, take it for what it is, but astrologically, is a day to kind of mock God, you know, that we're pulling away. It's the furthest huh. we can. You know, um, which I think, you know, as far as like, if I mean, I'm not God, but if, if I were God, if I, we're all fractals of God. But, you know, as an American, and I'm sure it's the, the same for Canada today in Canada, we have pride in our country. Like, we're proud of our ancestors. So it's not really, it, it didn't really work that way. Like, we weren't, we were proud of, of the independence and all that kind of stuff. So, but it's interesting you said you saw that leading up to that because astrologically, that's a pretty big deal, astrologically interesting and i i did not even know that because like i would say repeatedly in every reading i do I'm like i'm no astrologer i'm no numerologist i don't know i'm just saying what i'm saying so i have no idea so i had, didn't even know that wow i'm not an astrologer either i mean i i i feel like i i love astrology but i'm not i just i just know what i've heard other astrologers say and so that's very very fascinating to to see so maybe you know um we'll see what the universe has up its sleeve. You know, we know that the great, uh, the great elevation, the great ascension is upon us and there nothing can stop what's coming. I mean, literally nothing can stop what's coming. And we know that the bad guys are also harvesting too, just like the good people are. And so they're going to be here with us until the end of, end of the road, but nothing can stop what's coming. And so it'll just be interesting to see what happens. I mean, we, we've got so many things heating up here in the United States with Mr. T and, that shenanigans yeah. and um and everything going on. We've also got Kennedy, uh, Robert Kennedy, uh, putting in his nod, which is very interesting. That he's because he's um, I, I really like him. So um, we'll yeah. see. It's gonna be very interesting to see what this next this full year provides as far as what what's gonna be happening. But Sarah, yeah. so I want to ask you. <laughs> so I've been doing this with my with my guests, my friends. What is something about you, Sarah? that nobody mm. knows oh that's a good question that nobody knows like a hidden talent or like something weird mm. that no one would know or suspect about you well on youtube i don't think like on my channel i don't think i've ever i guess i've said that i love gaelic i know some gaelic and i also know some irish songs i can sing in irish that might be something that's cool um, i don't know gaelic or Gal i don't know i don't know that language that's cool it's cool. So there's Scottish Gaelic. I'm no like linguist, but like there's Scottish Gaelic and then there's Irish Gaelic. So they're very similar. It's just that they're different. So I know a little bit of both, but I love like I love Scottish Gaelic. But both languages are beautiful. I think that might be something, but something else nobody knows. 
Hmm. I have to really stop and think for a second. I asked I'm Angie confounded. this question, and confounded. that was the video we did about Angie's arrest when Angie got arrested and got thrown in a shell with the, a cell with a woman named Sparkle. Which, <laughs> like, I, I'm a I'm a killer poker player. Nobody, I I, I rock at poker. Um, but yeah, no, okay, so yeah, I'm sure there's other hidden talents that you. Ha I can actually touch my tongue to my nose. I can't do that. Okay. That is, I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to look that up because that's interesting. So. Yeah, it's, like a it's very interesting. Like they talk about like like the fact that I can stick my tongue out and touch my nose. I can't do that. When I was in college and I was have to like wipe my chin. <laughs> I'm sure I do that. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in college and I was studying like different literatures and stuff and the history of different um different things uh there was a professor that said back in the day they would only allow people in the uh, performing arts that could touch their tongue to their nose. Because it had to do with the way the tongue can actually, the diction uh, of certain words. Now, with that yeah. being said, okay, that I, I, because of my anxiety, I do kind of struggle sometimes if I get, I get kind of flustered sometimes because of anxiety. So that's different. But yeah, yeah, it's very interesting to study. My sister can do the three, you know, the, the curling of the tongue and then oh. there's the three thing that you can make it like the three little, my sister can do that, but I cannot do that. So. Okay. I don't think I can never try it, but I don't think I can. Like, I have a hard enough time talking. Like, I just can't always, like... I think you're a great talker. Don't worry. You're oh, great. thank you very much. Thank you. Sometimes people are like, oh, you're, like, slow down or talk clearly or that's something. That's the vata, the fast talking. That's the vata in you. That's the me too. Same, same sister, same. I can't hear very well. I'm very hard of hearing. Um, I I think it's the same RH negative as the... The, the tongue mm -hmm. thing is an RH negative thing as well. But my eardrums are are my ear canal to the drum is shaped differently than most people. Uh, so I have to have procedures done every once in a while. But I literally have a hard time hearing. Um, at, from uh, Catherine uh, Edwards and I are the same with that. And so um, you know, my boyfriend will get mad because he'll say, "Oh, you're you're yelling," and I, I don't think I'm yelling. I just literally can't hear very well. Uh, or I, I sorry, go ahead. So as it could have been me just blaring music when I was a teenager, but. <laughs> I don't have that, but I have always heard like a high pitched ringing in my ears. I don't think it's like any medical condition. I've always had it and it can go up and down. And I eventually, when I was taking like Reiki classes and energy healing classes and things, one of my teachers was like, yeah, you're hearing energy. Like you're like, that is yeah. what you're hearing. And I, I can tell sometimes like in, if, if it, it can get very, very loud sometimes almost to the point where I'm like, okay, I need to like listen to the radio or I need to do something else put it on the music or put on something just to sort of drown it out because it can be quite loud but i if, if that's the case i know helpers are around or up in, the, in a place with a lot of energy whatever, whatever the case is but I, I don't have what you have but i do have a similar thing with the ears it's interesting so. you know it's I, I would love to hear from our friends watching right now like what your mm -hmm. little quirks are with your with your body and weird i mean as an rh negative i know your mom's rh negative i have an extra vertebrae mm -hmm. so i don't have 33 i have 34 vertebrae i have an extra organ now some rh negatives oh. have like i know a friend who's also o negative and she has an extra kidney which is really handy if you're going to get have an extra or organ like having an extra liver or an extra kidney is very handy not just for you but for any loved ones i have an extra urinary tube <laughs> Well, that's helpful, right? <laughs> I think God was like, LOL. <laughs> By the way, there you go. I was like, like, she'll get a kick out of this when she's. A I remember when I was excited, I had this terrible digestion problems as a child. Like, Sarah and I are the same age. We both grew up in the 80s and the 90s. And um, I have had terrible allergies. I talked about this a little bit with Shanti and Catherine today on Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa. I have terrible food allergies. Part of that is the RH negative, just having a very dry colon. A lot of it's also the Vata as well. And when I was a child, I would like. My parents are probably like, what karma is this when I was born? I would literally, I'd be fine all day. I was, I was like eight years old, nine, seven, eight, nine, something like that. I'd be fine all day. And then I'd wake up in the middle of the morning or in the middle of the night and I would project all vomit. And I actually remember this. Like I remember waking up. I wouldn't go to my bathroom. I would run down the hall to my parents' bedroom. And that's where I would project all vomit. <laughs> oh, you're... Your dear parents were like, oh, no, oh, I, again. 
like this. And somehow in my eight year old head, I was like, I'm going to go to mom and dad's room and do this. Stuff. But I'd be fine all day. Like I'd be totally fine. I just wake up in the middle of the night, just have, and it was like, literally, that was like my hidden talent at that age was I could just make it fly. And, um, and so my parents, little girl. my parents took me to the pediatrician and he was like, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And so they sent me to Scottish Rite Medical uh, Children's Hospital to specialize in my, and they did an ultrasound on my stomach to watch. And that's when the doctor saw my extra urinary too. She was like, hold on. She's like, huh, your child has, because the urinary tubes come from your kidney to your bladder on either side. Okay. So one side has two on my, in my body. And the doctor was like, your kid has three urinary tubes. <laughs> They're like, oh. And my parents like, does this mean anything? They're like, no, <laughs> no, no. I'm hyperextended. I don't have like extra vertebrae, but I'm hyperextended. So my lower vertebrae are very tight together. So it's very difficult sometimes. Like even like sitting hurts. Yeah, it's uncomfortable because like there's just so much pressure. Yep. And that. Yeah, that's the hyper. That uh, that's a uh, core. Get your core strong. I. Yeah, for that. But no, it's um, it, the human body is actually quite comical. I mean, there's so many, there's yeah. so many things about the human body. I would love to hear you guys let us know your funny stories about your your body too. So, um, um did you projectile vomit as a child all over your parents' bedroom? I can't say that I ever did, but hey, there's there was one instance, but I won't get into it. But yeah, there, yeah. I okay. I, I will just say remember that. Ah, I have a memory. So I will tell you guys another time I projectile vomited. I was 12 years old. <laughs> this is when I had my appendix taken out, which I don't know. I might have to bleep this out because I've been sitting for a while. So I might have some cre some creases on my stomach. But I have a nice little Aww. scar oh, there. Dear. So nowadays, apparently, when somebody has a an appendicitis, they just like go in through the belly button or whatever and are little tiny mm. it's very very but back in the dark ages back in the days of yarn back in the back when wheels were oval they hadn't graduated to being round yet before Maybe. fire was invented <laughs> um, they had to literally hack you in half hack, hack your body in half to get that sucker out well I'll tell you guys, I'll never forget. And this was before I had gone, I went vegetarian at like 14. So, and this might be, I, I had an, an, inst an instance when I was five, when I realized animals were food and I got upset, but then your parents make you eat. But maybe this is why chicken became a no-no to me because, okay, it was a Sunday. It was a Sunday down here in the deep south. It was, it was the month of May. I was 12 and we were at church. We were at church, and I remember that, that I had a flower. It was like a Laura Ashley flower dress on, those hideous things with the big collars that our mamas put us in in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Anyway, and I was so excited because this, it was May, and we were going to go to my grandparents' house for lunch after church, and their pool was open. My grandparents had a pool, and we were going to go swimming. So I remember sitting in church, and I was so excited to swim. So church gets out. We go to grandma and granddaddy's house, my pa my dad's parents' house, and we're having our fried chicken. For s and I'm just so anxious to get through lunch because I want to go swimming. Well, all of a sudden, during lunch, I start to feel this weird pain in my stomach. Now, obviously, pains in my stomach was nothing new. I just told you I I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite talented when it comes to projectile vomiting. So obviously, I was. But this I remember was a very different pain. Okay. It was different. I remember going to the kitchen to make my plate and like having to stop for a moment because it hurts so bad to the point where all of a sudden I didn't want to swim anymore. So I'm sitting out by the pool and my Laura Ashley church dress haven't even changed. Oh, no. And I'm telling my mom and my dad, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. And my mother thinks that I'm trying to devise a plan to concoct a plan to not go to school tomorrow. So she's thinking I'm trying to get out of going to school to school tomorrow and I've still got some homework to do and all that kind of stuff. My dad, though, on their hand, other hand was like, no, she really wanted to swim and she's still sitting in that god awful church dress. She hasn't even bothered. <laughs> like, she must really not be feeling well. So my dad took me home while my mom stayed with my sister, watched my sister swam. I did my homework. And my mom, and then it's like getting close to bedtime. My stomach still hurts really bad. And I remember I was sitting on the toilet, like as a 12 year old, like sitting on the toilet, holding my stomach. My mom walks in the bathroom. My mom looks at me. She goes, you're going to school tomorrow. 
you are going to school tomorrow. Still thinking I'm trying to get out. She's thinking, but, oh gosh. So I get in bed that night and around 10 o'clock, I start again, projectile vomiting. <laughs> so my Poor mom, girl. Comes in, we moved around to every bed in the house that night. Cause every time I would sit up and vomit, it would just get everywhere. So my mother would have to strip the oh. bed. And my mom and I would move to the, I ended up in my parents' bedroom um, by the time the next day came around. And at that point I was just dry heaving cause there was nothing left. And I remember laying in my parents' bed and my parents were having a conversation. It was like seven o'clock in the morning. And my dad was going to take my sister to school. And my dad was telling my mom, my, my dad's a veterinarian. So my dad, he's a doctor. He, my dad was telling my mom, it's probably just a stomach virus. Just wait and bring her in at nine when the pediatrician's office opens. And, um, you know, just, just wait because you don't need to basically don't beep the doctor. Don't call the doctor to come in early. It's probably just a stomach virus. So no need. Cause my dad was very sensitive cause he would be on call about calling doctors and right. off hours when it was really probably just a, just a virus. Well, by the time my dad leaves with my sister and this is how my mom actually saved my life. And I'll get into that. I was dry heaving so much. And my mother was like, okay. I need to take you to the doctor. We're not going to go to your pediatrician. We're going to go to urgent care because they're open. So we go to urgent care and the doctor, Dr. Uh, Holcomb was a doctor at, at urgent care. My mother knew him and he was feeling around in my stomach. And at first he was like, it does kind of sound. Yeah. He, he's like, yeah, it's probably a stomach virus, but he, it might be her. He kept saying it might be her appendix. And my parents had not even considered that, but he took my blood my uh, white blood count was up, which is indication of an appendicitis. And then they did an uh, uh, MRI x-ray to look and see. And what it looked like in this MRI x-ray thing was my colon. It looks, it looks like something was wrong with my colon. Not my, my colon looks swollen, not my appendix. And so Dr. Holcomb was really... Now, guys, again, this is the dark ages. I'm sure technology is... I would, I'm 40 now. I'm sure technology is a lot better now. But yeah, I remember him looking at this x-rays thing. This is really weird. It's looking like her col something's wrong with her colon. And so Dr. Uh, Holcomb told my mother, we need to get her into the hospital. I want her to be observed by a surgeon. And so my mother took me to the hospital. This is all before nine o'clock, by the way, before my pediatrician was even at the office. And so oh. I go to Dr. Davis, who actually took over after my grandfather was head of surgery. And Dr. Davis took over from my grandfather. So my mother gave me to him. So there was um, some family connection there. And um, Dr. Davis was very curious about why my blood count, white blood count was up and why my colon was swollen. Meanwhile, I'm getting sicker and sicker. I mean, I'm, I remember, like, I have a visceral memory like it was yesterday of just being just, like, so sick. And so Dr. Davis is like, we're going to keep her under observation for a few days because I'm not quite convinced this is a stomach virus. And Dr. Davis told my parents he thought it was Crohn's disease, which would have made sense because I had struggled with my, my stomach my whole life. But he was like, but I want to observe her. Meanwhile, my pediatrician comes into the hospital and he's pitching a fit saying, this is ridiculous. She's got a stomach virus. You guys oh, need to discharge her. So this is why I'm saying it was really great. My mother intuitively knew to take me to urgent care because if I had gone mm -hmm. to the pediatrician, I would have been sent home and I would have died. So, um, so a, a couple of days go by in the hospital. They're giving me all these drugs to try to numb the pain, which might have started me on a habit. <laughs> Of, of trying to chase that dragon when I got to college. Just saying. Because <laughs> I remember I remember sitting there. They got me. They put me on a drug. And they got my parents got me to walk around. I sat down on a chair in the hospital room. And I remember my mom and my dad going, Bryce? Bryce? And I was just oh. there, like, like, I remember that. And my mother, oh, I remember my mother looking at my me. dad going, oh, my God, she's so high. <laughs> she's so <laughs> Twelve, like I wore a training bra. Like I was twelve years old. You know, I still play with Barbies. Like this is little kids, and they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor, so they, the doctors, the nurses would come in like every like. morning. They would take my blood at certain times to keep checking my blood. And yeah. every morning, then they would ask me if it hurt on my right side. They would be like, "Does it hurt on your right side?" Well, it hurt all over my body, so I would say no. Like <laughs> it just it hurts everywhere. Like it hurts everywhere. Yeah, it hurts everywhere. Like I. But it kept getting progressively worse as the days went on, and so finally, I was I at twelve was like so fed up, and so this I, went on for this one. This one on for days. This one for days. So I had Dang. no 
And I can, they kept asking me if it hurt on my right side. And I didn't know what that meant. Like, like I'm 12. Like hmm. I had no idea that was an indication of an appendicitis. Like there was, there was something that they were, they, they were worried about my right side. And so the nurse came in at that morning and she was like, does it hurt on your right side? I said, yes, it does. <laughs> like, I just said, yes, it does. <laughs> totally lied to her. Totally lied to her. And she goes, okay, that's good. So she leaves the room. The next thing I know, I'm being prepped for surgery. Like all oh, this is happening. <laughs> You're like, I just said yes. That's all I said. <laughs> You're 12. I didn't know that's where they were taking <laughs> I'm just on a ride on my hospital bed. Like, we're just riding through the elevator. They're giving me the good drugs. My parents are coming with me. I don't know a surgery prep. And then all of a sudden, my parents say goodbye to me. I'm being rolled in there. I'm laying there. And they're like, okay, Bryce, I need you to count down from 10. And it's like 10. And if you've been under surgery, you go out like that. Yeah, you go out like within. Yeah. So I wake up in recovery and all I can feel is like this pressure on my stomach. Oh. It was awful. And the nurse brings me back and I start getting emotional. because so I'm like, what did I do? I lied. I lied to the nurse. I know something happened. And they cut my leg off. Like, And so I come out of recovery and they're, they're willing to go the hall to my hospital room. I see my mother standing there. I'll never forget what she had on. This was like the 90s. She had on this big white, nice like designer t-shirt with matching shorts, like very 90s and like kids, you know. Yeah. And um, my mother's like all emotional. My my mom's 5'2", my dad's 6'4". And so they're standing beside each other, you know. I see them. <laughs> I see them. I, I lied. I was sorry. My mom's all emotional. My dad's got his hands on his hip. And I, I looked at my mom. I said, I lied. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> Do something. It hurt everywhere. Meanwhile, I had no clue that it actually gone through <laughs> surgery. And my mother's looking at me. Oh. And she's like, I'm glad you lied. She's like, <laughs> I'm glad you lied. She's like, your appendix was like hours away from bursting. I'm glad you lied. And and it, what oh. what turned out what had happened, what had happened was my appendix, because I guess I was such a small, skinny kid with like an extra organ and an extra bone, my appendix decided to wrap itself under my colon. <gasps> so on the oh, picture no. from, the, from the dark ages, it looked like my colon was swollen when it was actually my oh. appendix. That was under that was tucked up under the colon and so oh. and so i was so upset and i, I kept apologizing for lying like, i'm sorry i'm sorry i lied, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm sorry. like that was a lesson i learned like don't fucking lie like what kind of karma is that and next thing i know i'm like got a head my stomach's been cut open and they're like no they kept oh, saying i apologize to the doctor for lying and they were like no 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 it's it's a good thing because your appendix was about to rupture and so you need it we needed to we just didn't know and if your appendix i mean if your appendix ruptures and they don't clean it out it's deadly so um and if, if appendix ruptures and then they go in for surgery it's a much more serious cert operation so they were like it's mm -hmm. totally fine it's totally fine but then I had to stay in the hospital for a little bit longer because of, I guess, because it had gotten tucked up under my colon. So I was stuck in there for like a, and like a week after surgery. I was still there. And then after I got released from this, so let me, as parents, if your children have issues with lying and you're trying to teach them, just tell, just share the story. <laughs> share the story. Allow so, them to speak. Sometimes when, when, an, uh, when a surgery happens, this ha you have all the different layers of skin, right? So the bodily fluids, if for some reason the skin isn't stitched up totally correct, bodily fluids can kind of get in between the layers of skin. Now, my stomach was already swollen because it had been hacked open. And it took me a really long time to get the guts up to actually look at my scar when I was 12. And I don't know if you can see. So this side, there's one side of my, it was over here. I don't know if you can see that. It, there was a, a huge indention there because what happened was my incision around that was healing instead of the swelling going down the swelling just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger wow. like it looked like a tumor was growing out of the side of my and i was do you remember umbros from the 90s umbros no, shorts oh was like soccer shorts we wore oh, oh I right wear, like, okay yes umbros every day because i couldn't get my shorts right, on right, right. So finally, my mother was like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> so she calls Dr. Davis. And I remember going into his office like off hours and met him there. 
And he was like, oh, this this happens sometimes. Her fluids, there, her fluids gotten stuck. We've got to just basically pop it. So he takes this, oh, like, no. you know, those long in the doctor's office is stick with a cotton wob. He just went, yeah. oh, my God, it hurts so freaking bad. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of this, this fluid just started coming out of my stomach. And I remember because we had just studied Old Faithful in school, you know, Yosemite, the where it explodes. And I was like, oh, it's like okay. Old Faithful. Like, oh, it's um and so and so that that's um yeah that was started with projectile vomit guys and then i ended up with this <laughs> when oh, i when awesome. i lived in los angeles when i was after college when i lived in la Another now one. because of my age because i'm 40 i wear higher waisted bikinis they're great ladies if you're of a certain age control top higher waisted <laughs> but when i was like 22 23 24 living in la i would wear like skimpy bikinis and somebody saw my scar and was like did you get into a gang fight and i was like sure did sure did totally got into a gang fight down in Compton. <laughs> sure did I, I took it i took a slice of my <sighs> absolutely that's what happened I lied and so the game you lied again. <laughs> you lied again. Sure did, surely did. I was in a surely did. Oh me. I was in a gang fight down in Compton. <laughs> oh my god, what a story. You poor and you're just like twelve. You didn't That's know. 12. You were just I remember little. my friends coming to visit me in the hospital because I was Aww. either I think it's because I was probably you know, we're, we're twelve, right? You're twelve. You're yeah. I, we were still playing with Barbies at 12. That's how innocent we were. I know kids today at 12 are doing TikTok and all that shit. We were still playing with Barbies. I remember my friends oh, coming yeah. in. It's probably because I was so fucking drugged up on painkillers. I had a morphine. I remember I had a morphine button where I could hit a button for morphine. It was no. fantastic. <laughs> You're like... More, 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 more. <laughs> Do you remember the show? Did you guys get the show in Canada, Mr. Belvedere? I, maybe, but I don't remember it. He was like an older, like, mammy, like a male governess. Anyways, an 80s no, show. I don't remember. I mean, maybe, but I don't remember watching it. We had Mr. Dress Up. We had Mr. Well, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Yep. Rogers. Mr. Velveteer. It was like a, a, an evening show for families, but we would, my mom and I would have watched reruns of it in the hospital room, and I would just hit that morphine button. <laughs> oh, jeez. <You're> like, <laughs> I was fantastic. I don't think I want to leave the hospital. Actually, at one point, I was like, "Do I really have to go? Like, do we? Do we? Do I really?" I had people left like all these balloons for me because I was a kid, right? Oh, they were bringing flowers. They were bringing balloons. Um, you're like, you're just like, I want my button. I just want my button. <laughs> my, my drug button. <laughs> How old were you when you got home? Like was, you didn't have your. Oh, oh I had a week. So I, 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 after after the hospital, I had a week at home before I started going back to school. Um, and I wanted, I, you know, at twelve, it was the end of the school year. You know, sixth grade year. I wanted to go back to school. Obviously, I missed my friends. But um, yeah, I had to wear umbros for the rest of the school year. We had a very, very strict dress code, and um, which I had to end up doing that in high school as well. When I got sick in high school, that's a totally different story. But that was the only thing. Like when I was twelve, and because we had a very strict dress code, because you know, private. Sarah and I are both private school kids. You, oh, they, I get it. I I get it. I, I, had to wear I, yeah. I got the excuse where I got to wear umbros and a t-shirt because I had such a big patch on my stomach. It was only a couple weeks left of school anyway, so they waived the dress code for me just because I couldn't get the khaki pants on because, you know. They had hacked me in half. Big uh, touch, right? I, I didn't get to do PE for the rest of the year. I had to sit and watch PE because I had my stomach hacked open. So I would have been so happy about that, though. I'd be like, I don't have to go to gym class. Yes. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I kind of at twelve. Now, when I was in high school and I got sick and had to wear umbros again because I had some patches on my back from some spinal taps and stuff, that I did not like because in high school you don't want to look different. You want you want to blend in. But at twelve, right. I was like, fuck yeah, I get to wear umbros to school. <laughs> And then you like you walk in because like then you feel like all special because you don't have to wear the dress code and well I, my class was so it was such a small class because yeah private school small schools uh -huh. um, that uh -huh. they had these writing assignments uh, when I was away 
when I was being morphined up at the hospital, some of their assignments for the kid, for my classmates were these writing assignments that you would do at 12 where you would have to write about something. So many kids wrote about me getting my appendix out. I think I still have them at home somewhere. I think my mom saved them. They would come and visit me in the hospital and they would see me drugged out of my head. Like I remember... (laughs) I have a memory of, I won't say the name, I have a memory of a couple of my little girlfriends from sixth grade standing there with their moms and like their mom, you know, were little, their mom, and I remember their eyes being like, because <laughs> I think I was probably hot tonight, hitting that morphine button. So <laughs> They're like, I told them all the story, don't lie. Don't lie. <laughs> You're going to get the surgery. And they can get the morphine button. Morphine. Well, it's so funny because one of my really good friends, my best friend, we're still really good friends. She had had a lot of surgeries on her arm as a child because something happened to her as a kid that had to, they had to go in and work on her arm. And after I got, had my appendix out, I was over at her house playing because she had had a lot of surgeries too. So we were like comparing notes and she asked me, she goes, did they give you the morphine button? I was like, yeah, I got to hit the button. She was like, isn't it great? Like, we were 12-year-old druggies. We were like... <laughs> Let's see that the morphine button. I mean, I did a gallbladder surgery like 12 years ago, but I never had the morphine button. You never had... Well, maybe they felt... Maybe they're a little stricter now with the morphine because of the opioid problem, but in the... What, how old are we? 83? 80, 80, 85. 83. So it was like 1995 oh, when had the surgery. Whatever. So they were yeah. like, give her heroin. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. If um, I would say Long if there's any young 20 year olds watching this right now, you missed out. You missed out, my friends. We were truly the last great generation where they were like, whatever. I had my, my, my tonsils removed when I was just a little girl. I wasn't, I don't think I was 12. I think it was maybe a bit younger, but I never had the morphine button. Maybe they just felt sorry for me because maybe they yeah. thought I was actually dying. <laughs> like, push the button and just be happy i don't know like last days be peaceful because looking back i mean again i was 12 so i was like but looking back at that now my nephew is will be 11 in in uh in october so he's getting close to that age and i can't imagine how terrifying that would be for a parent to see your child that sick and to not you know, the stomach virus, yeah, they're going to throw up for a while, but they're going to start to get better. I was getting worse. I was, like, yeah. getting worse. Okay. And so I think my parents must have been panicked. I, looking back, I just I remember thinking that button's really fun. Mm. Like, you know, like, and so they might have just been trying to make me feel better. And the fact that they, yeah. they're probably, exactly. I mean, I don't know for any doctors watching, there's probably guilt with doctors when they don't act fast enough with the patient, which I understand that. They didn't know it was wrong. And so they weren't going to. Yeah thing about surgeons is they're not going to do surgery if they don't have to do surgery. They're going to, surgery is always going to be the last step um, to figuring this out. And so if they had known right away that it was in my appendix, I would have had it, I would have been in operation that first day to remove it. Um, So I don't fault them at all, but that might've been why they were so quick to give me that much drugs. It might've been the level of pain they thought I was in because they had waited uh, it might have been because of where my appendix had been smushed up in my colon. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Like, and then they had to like burst the. F- oh God. They didn't give me any. Listen, when they popped that sucker, they didn't give me any type of numbing. No lidocaine, nothing. They were just like pop. I was like, "Where's my morphine now, bitches?" Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> I want my button. Where's my button now? <laughs> oh, so God. yeah, yeah. Like was- we're real people. Like we we have our own things. We have our own. I mean, but I will always be grateful for Dr. Holcomb because he he was literally the doctor that was like, "No, something's wrong here." If I had gone to my pediatrician that morning, like my dad wanted me to, I would have been sent home with a stomach virus and who knows what would have happened. So, um, and I don't blame them. I mean, of course they thought some, they thought it was Crohn's disease because it was my colon. That was another thing that they suspected, which would have sucked. I would have still be dealing with it to this day, but they could have worked, you know? So thank God it was just, and like I said, appendicitis is today from what I understand from friends who have had their appendixes out as adults. It's very quick. It's like an outpatient. The scar is tiny. You can't even see the scar of how they do it. <laughs> Like that. Back in the days, they had to saw us open. Oh god, it was awful. Like with my gallbladder surgery, they it was like it was like the laparoscopic. Like it was like yeah, a few small things. I mean, I, I was in the hospital for the weekend, but that's because I had it on a Friday or something. So I was like in there for the weekend, and it was bad, but I was fine. Thank God. 
they, but, didn't give you the, they didn't give you the morphine at all? No they probably gave me something. I know they gave, I think they gave me morphine, I think, beforehand. No, they gave me, no, 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 that's not true. They put me on an IV beforehand because they, they said, like, don't drink anything. I'm like, don't have any, like, water or anything to prep for surgery. So I have had that. I think they gave me something. I don't remember. That was, Relax. they gave me something. A few, I went to the ER a few times for it before I had the surgery. So I don't remember. It's all, it's all a blur. One time they did give me, I think they gave me more one time and it, it didn't really do too much because the pain was just so intense. And they sent me home. <laughs> Here, here's a prescription for like whatever it was. So we're off like looking for here's like a one tablet of painkiller. That's pretty much what they did. <laughs> they gave me a prescription. So we're off at like two a.m. or twelve o'clock, whatever it was. They like, trying to find like one. The only open pharmacy at that point in time was like on the other side of town or whatever it was. It was like a good drive away. I was still in like in agony, and then they're like, "Oh, you're fine. Go home." And I'm like, you're like, dump it up. <laughs> you next time, Sarah, just tell them it hurts on your right side. Just lie. Fly. Then they'll give you the morphine. I lied. Moral of the story, kids. If you lie, you get the morphine. We're not condoning anything. We're not condoning anything. <laughs> not condoning any behavior. I am. Um, I am. Uh, Promoting any behavior. <laughs> my mom always tells this story because my mom colored her hair her whole. My mother My mother started graying in her, in her 20s, which, thank God, that has not happened to me. I thought I was graying. When my hairdresser was like, no, that's your blonde. I was like, oh, awesome. Um, but my mom, because my dad's so much taller than my mom. My dad said, my mom tells a story about when I was in the hospital at that, that point. I think this was before operation. Uh, my mother basically lived in the hospital with me. And my father would come and go with my yeah. sister. And my dad said, my they were looking over my body, talking to the doctor. And all of a sudden, my dad goes, oh, my God, Alice. And she was like, what? Her roots had, like, grown because she hadn't been to the hairdresser because she because he's so much uh -huh. taller than her he could see her because she just was with me she was with her kid and the, she didn't leave the hospital you know with her 12 you know when you're that young you the parents stay with you in the hospital um she slept okay. right on that little we just watched mr velvedere i think i was in way i was enjoying it way more because i actually had the bed and had the morphine she just had the couch oh. and the tv you had a better deal in that case. I had a better day. Um, and it's so funny. You know, the funny thing is, is people talk about med beds, about the fact that we'll, we'll have the option of like, you know, of them taking away our scars. And I, I don't want my scars taken away. I don't want them taken away. I want to keep my yeah. scars. It's kind of part of who, it's sort of like part of like your journey though. It's, it's almost yeah. like a reminder of experiences that you've had. I think I would, I would want some of the scars taken away, but some of them not because again, like, yeah, it's, it's almost like a reminder. Like I survived this. I experienced this. I survived and it helped shape me to who I am. I mean, I can look back yeah. on that time of my appendicitis, even though I'm sure my parents were scared shitless because it would, they didn't know what was happening. Um, but mm -hmm. I think it's hysterical. Like, I think that's a funny fucking story. The fact that my mother didn't believe me at first, then I ended up ruining like every, I mean, my mother was very Southern and or is, was, she's still alive, is very Southern. My mother's very Southern and she's very house proud. So like growing up, you know, the Southern Living magazines, the, so for the fact that I was literally ruining every sheet that my mother had in that house. God has a sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. It, and it, there's definitely a, it is a, it's a horrible story, but it's a funny story. It's, I think it's, it's funny as fuck. Like I, the fact that I literally, I mean, I remember coming down that hall hmm. from recovery thinking what the hell did i just do this is why you don't lie like i was like really punishing i mean i remember feeling that panicked like oh my god oh. They've, i've just done something wrong because i something happened because i lied and no it didn't actually did it. it saved my life so maybe that was an intuitive nod of god like just tell them the right side because they need to go in and take this out um you know and just the hysterical story of the morphine of two 12 year old little girls afterwards playing barbie dolls talking about how great morphine is <laughs> the button is we call it the button the button the button <laughs> the button you know we're 12 at the time you know so there's a lot of humor there and i like my scar i like having that scar there because <laughs> it is and I'm very grateful. That's one thing I am, you know, even though we come down hard on Western medicine a lot, I do a lot. Mm -hmm. It's stuff like emergency surgeries that are really important. Um, Saved our lives. 
Yeah, saves our lives. The gallbladder, the appendix. Um, I had spinal mm-hmm. surgery on it later on in high school. I've had a ear surgery. Which side? I can't remember what it's. Oh, right here. It's right here. I, I used to have a bunch of piercings up my ear, and then I had to have ear surgery. And so, like, a few of the holes got taken out because they, they cut. You can kind of see the scar a little bit right there. They cut a chunk of my ear off because it was the precancer, and then they sewed it back together. And so I so they got rid of some of the piercings. <laughs> so, um, like, oh well, get back in again. And when they did the plastic, the plastic surgeon, so they cut it out and they had to go to plastic surgeon. So plastic surgery isn't just for vanity stuff. It's you know it's reconstruction from other surgeries. When the plastic surgeon was sewing my ear back together, I was on I was only under localized anesthesia, which is not. I think localized is the one where you're not totally out. You're just numb. Mm-hmm, so I, I heard so. this whole conversation. He was talking to the nurse who was helping him. He was telling telling the nurse about his sex life. I was like 16 at the time. And I don't know if he understood that I told, I was conscious of what I, I just couldn't feel. I was numbed out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was telling the nurse all about like this woman he was dating and stuff. And I was 16. I don't even know if I had kissed a boy yet at this point. And I was like learning a lot. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> I don't even remember that. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, <laughs> I don't even remember that doctor's name. I just remember the full conversation. I remember everything, and I think I was taking notes. <laughs> I I don't even know what to like. What 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 do I say in regards to that? That is so random. If and you're a surgeon and you've got a young teenager on your table and they're not fully knocked out, just be careful what you talk about. <laughs> Because that, that teenager hears what you're saying. <laughs> so, yeah, like, we are, even though we're, like, into spirituality, we're still very much normal people. We still have our own experiences. And well, they like, can be fun. He was working on my ear. So he was literally over my ear. <laughs> like, I could literally, like, his mouth was right there working on my ear. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm really I can't even remember that doctor's name. It was such a fast procedure. But I don't get me wrong. I'm grateful you sewed my ear back together because I would hate to be walking around with a, a chunk out of my ear. But yeah, I, I learned a lot about sex that day. <laughs> Only you, Bryce. Only you. Of course. That was another God wink. That was another LOL from God. And you didn't um, even lie that time. You didn't even no, lie. I, I, I think no. I, my mom's watching this. Surprise, mom. I don't even think I told my parents about this. Oh, my gosh. I think I just reeled and I was like, okay, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we're out of here. <laughs> Let's go home. Let's go home now. Where's, where's my sister? Let's go home. Let's go watch. Let's go watch Saved by the Bell. Like, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, so, my I didn't mean to take up this show. I meant for you to tell your stories, Sarah. Um, Oh, yeah, bro. It's all sharing. I mean, it's all sharing. But that's part of life, though, isn't it? It's like, it's just relating to part of, like, why I think why we're here. It's good to relate and share stories, find humor and things. And then that by relating, by sharing stories, we learn more about ourselves, too. That's and Sarah and I are the exact, so we're, we're both 1983 babies, so yeah. we definitely have very, very similar childhood experiences. Very with, similar. Um, cultural, you know, we both are private school kids, same yep. same um, year we were born, so we have a lot in common. We, we both can relate yeah. to the differences in our childhood compared to ch- kids today. Kids today. Yeah. Um, today, so yeah. different. So different oh, from how different. we were raised. I mean, the internet didn't, even wasn't a thing. I remember... Like, even when I was in high school, um, so I was born in August, I'm a Leo with the hair, and I remember I was in high school, what year was it? It was like, it was like late 90s, I guess, like mid to late 90s, I, I, like we started high school, like August, like September of 97, so it was like somewhere, time, somewhere around there, we had, I remember I had to get parental consent to go on the internet, like it was that new, that we had to have, yeah, we had to like, and it was like a whole thing that during the school, like during the class, like it was, I think it was travel and tourism or geography class or something. We had to go into the internet lab and sit at the computer, two, two students per computer. And we had to have like parental consent, I think at one point. I remember when I would go online. Yeah. Entered high school. We had to do a whole class again. I, I swear like 
elementary school, middle school, and high school, we had to do a whole thing on the Dewey Decimal System. Listen. Yeah. One day when I'm old and I have Alzheimer's, the one thing I'll probably remember how to do is the Dewey Decimal System. Because that thing was drilled into us and it's useless now. But I remember we they did have computers in the library, but we weren't allowed to use them as any type of like resource tool for anything. Even when I went to university, they didn't trust the internet. I don't know really? how to do a bibliography for the internet. I only know how to do a bibliography for freaking books. How does one do a bibliography for the oh, internet? Oh, like, I find that very confusing. I never like doing them. I can never figure out how to do bibliography. And I remember, I remember from school, but I just, uh, yeah, I would be terrified. If I had kids today, I'd be like, I don't know, man. I tell my friends' kids and my nephew and nieces that, um, when we were kids, we had to like earn our knowledge. We had to like go on a scavenger hunt for our knowledge. Yeah. Like you had to yeah. literally go hunt it down. Yeah. Um, in the library. library. Yep. Finding the book and then if the book was checked out and you had to wait, you know, and so, so it's very different, very, very, but I'm so glad that we, you know, Sarah, I, I say we're the last great generation. I was telling you before we started filming, if you were born between 1980 and 1984, we're the only generation that has, it's a, such a small, we're not, Generation X, nor are we millennials, we're called Xennials, um, 1980 to 1984, because we're too feral to be millennials, and but we're not, we're more savvy than Generation X when it comes to technology, although that's, that's debatable. My boyfriend, who's Generation X, is way more savvy at technology than I am, but I feel like that 1980, 1984, we were like the last generation of like the latchkey kids of the free range feral children you know and i think we did take a lot more responsibility on because we had to we were not caught I me mean, we're not coddled to the extent there were no safe spaces you know we i agree you know I agree. So, just, go ahead <clears throat> no it just we, we just we we had it was just we learned how to be people we did we, we like we didn't have the internet Social media wasn't a thing. Cell phones were just starting when I was in high school. Like people were just starting to get high, like cell phones in high school. And so we didn't have that technology. Like you said, we had to rely more on ourselves. We had to rely more on like, okay, I need to find like the book in the library. How do I find that? Think for yourself. Don't rely on other people because you need to find it for yourself. So it really created more of a sense, I think, of independence in that way. And it maybe more of an independent thinking or an, or an independence of thought. If that makes sense because it, we couldn't just go online and look something up you had to like really sit and contemplate at least in my, for me anyway i had to like really sit and contemplate and like really look and think differently it wasn't just like oh okay i'll find it here no no, no. you had to like sit and figure it out for yourself have yeah. that critical thinking that i don't like i'm not into this i'm not aware of intricacies intricacies of the school system today but we were taught like critical thinking like okay this is how it is and you no know, this is what it is and how do you figure that out like think actually think for yourself yeah we also had debate we had to learn debate when i was a kid like yeah, we we're both sides and 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 we were assigned a side so even if you didn't agree with that side you had to learn how to find points to prove the point of that side which was so helpful and i think that's what's missing today is we're not listening to each other we're not hearing um what the other side is saying and so i agree i think we literally I mean, this was before now. I mean, even in the United States, which is crazy to think of books being banned in the United States, because I think out of all the countries, the United States prides itself on being no censorship. But, you know, we when I was in high school, we had to study like Huckleberry Finn and all these books that are, in some schools they've now banned. But yeah. there's. We had to talk about these 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 topics and these things and understand them. And, yeah. you know, it's. um yeah, it's and we, we did have these these this we, we weren't connected to our parents constantly because we didn't have cell phones, you know, and yeah. so you played outside with your friends. And I remember my sister and I were fighting once. My sister and I didn't fight much at all growing up. And we, we, we really didn't. But one time we were fighting and my mother came in the room and she was like, girls, you look at each other. You're it. That's all the family you have is each other. That's yeah. it. And so yeah, my mother would say, like, I'm not, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, my mother would be like, I'm not coming in and, and getting involved in this. You girls have to figure it out unless somebody's truly hurt or dying. Even then, if you're dying, your mom will say, you're still going to school tomorrow. <laughs> Just lie. No, no, no. We're not condoning any untoward behavior. I saw, I saw a little sh uh, YouTube short meme that I thought was hysterical. It was like, back in the 80s, I died once. And my mom told me to walk it off. <laughs> 
<laughs> like that's a <laughs> my dad it was a different leg. mentality back then my dad broke his leg when he was a kid skiing and his dad my grandfather made him get up and like walk home. like hobble home okay that's extreme that's extreme for guy that um, was his generation well, well, I guess we had a bit easier, but still, I mean, it did create an independent of thought. Like, yeah. it created a different way of thinking. Like, you just, like, thought more for yourself, I think. I, and I think we all have to rely so much on others, there's, in a way. There's, there's no comedy anymore. People are so uh, uh, paranoid of offending yeah. someone that there's no comedy anymore. People can't laugh about their own, at themselves or at their own situation, you know? And, and that's yeah. sad because being a human is quite funny you know it's it's quite comical to be in these bodies and i next life i'm coming back as a dog if i can't go to venus next life i'm going to come back as somebody's dog because well my little dog my breeze she's she's here right now that if you hear like rustling noises she's looking for oh she just found a i <laughs> to see you darling she's like all weekly because like she knows like i'm i'm talking so she comes over and that's why my screen is wiggling sorry i know i don't know she's there's a there's like a paper container or something here and she's after it. Oh, you can't have that baby. Oh, no, that's a makeup. So she's after I know, Listen, after listen. I, yeah, I get it with dogs, but I got to hop off soon. So I speak of dogs. I have to take my dog out because he needs to go poop. As an adult, I'm walking around big dogs like Bree and Robbie. They make man poops and we have to pick them up. So Yeah, we do. <laughs> so, well, um, all right, you guys. So once again, I'm actually going to have you put in the comment section if you want to be entered in for the two people that are going to get a reading with Sarah. I want you to write Sarah is awesome in the comment section, and you will you will go you will go your name will go in for the drawing. Is there anything you want to close off with Sarah before we leave today? Oh, just thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it, and thank you everyone. I said thanks to everyone for their patience, and it was just oh June May was just insane, and I just for myself I couldn't literally couldn't even speak so thank you for watching thank you for your interest and I hope that you find your TV feeds helpful and I'll be sharing her set when she loads up her June reading that she just did herself I'll put that on my community tab guys on Monday so be looking out for that um and yeah you guys share any of it also on top of saying Sarah is awesome in the comment section I want to hear some of your funny childhood stories what tell me about a time you lied to your parents and what happened <laughs> did you get more and, I, and, I, and a really quick comment too i think it's a really important moment i mentioned this i think a minute ago too but it's important i think like you said to have the humor but even though we're into spirituality i think like sometimes people think oh like your life is perfect and it's all calm and it's all this no, we're still real people we've had our experiences we've had our medical you no know, things we're still real people and i think this conversation just highlights that like oh yeah like the between the button and the hobbling and i broke my right foot twice and all this other stuff and I, you just it's good i think to remember that we're still individuals we're still we're still people and it doesn't make us probably, better or worse we're very probably grounded like micro, it's probably why i love microdosing to this day that was probably where that started <laughs> it could be <laughs> That's where, that's where it all started was that that fancy button so oh, yes guys and i would love I to hear your advice. stories too guys if there are any funny childhood stories you have or a time you lied to your parents what were the consequences of that lie if you want to share it publicly no i share it publicly yeah don't feel pressured only if you want to so anyway guys well we love you and i will also be putting sarah's links down in the description box below as well guys so if you're not subscribed to sarah go and get subscribed so you can keep up with what she's doing with her awesome talent of tea leaf reading and we will talk to you guys soon bye everybody bye